In Daniel 2, Nebuchadnezzar dreams of a great image. It is made of different metals representing succeeding world empires. Rome, represented by iron, was the greatest of the empires. It is perhaps not surprising that there are several links between the book of Daniel, which prophesies so much about Rome, and Paul's letter to the Romans. In this video we will consider the links which particularly relate to the first three chapters of Daniel and the letter to the Romans. Romans 11 ends with Paul extolling the wisdom of God and chapter 12 begins with the obligations for the believers which arises from this. Oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord or who hath been his counsellor? Who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There are several links in these words with the early part of Daniel. In Daniel 2 verses 17 and 18 we read, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret. The Spirit through Paul takes up the phrase mercies of God in Romans 12 verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. In Daniel 2 verse 21, Daniel speaks of how God giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Paul too speaks of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. In Romans 12 verse 2, Paul spoke of how the believers should prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And Daniel said to Melzar, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. In Daniel 3, Nebuchadnezzar makes his own image. This image is high, its height in hearts by its comparatively narrow width. Also, not just the head, but the whole image is made of gold. He intended his empire to last forever. When the three friends of Daniel refused to bow down to the image, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. But they were unharmed, and an angel walked with them. As Nebuchadnezzar said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire. They were in the fire. They should have been dead, but they were living. This is surely a type of what Paul calls a living sacrifice, in Romans 12 verse 1. But Paul also uses the phrase that ye present your bodies, this is a quotation from the words of Nebuchadnezzar when he said of the three friends of Daniel that they had yielded their bodies. Paul is clearly alluding back to the incident in Daniel 3. In Romans 12 verse 16, Paul says, Mind not high things. This also fits with the context of Daniel 3, for the three friends were not minded to bow down to the high image. So we have seen that the end of Romans 11 and the beginning of Romans 12 have some specific links with the first three chapters of Daniel. Notice how the beginning of Romans 12 verse 2 is seen to have more power in the light of this background. Paul says, Be not conformed to this world. Daniel and his three friends were prime examples of men who, despite the pressures of Babylon, did not conform. But there are more allusions to Daniel in Romans 12 specifically to the image of Daniel 2. Romans 12 verses 3 to 5 says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Notice first that Nebuchadnezzar was a prime example of one who thought of himself more highly than he ought to think. Secondly, note the contrast between the image of Daniel 2 and the body of Christ. The image was made of different metals, symbolizing the nations of the world. The body of Christ is made up of different members, individual men and women. 
In Daniel 2 verse 43, Daniel says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. But in contrast to the iron and clay which should not cleave one to another, the members of the body of Christ should cleave to that which is good. But there is a fundamental link between the image and the body of Christ. For the members which make up the body of Christ come from the nations of the world, symbolised by the metals in the image. As it says in Revelation 5 verse 9, the redeemed will be out of every nation. But as we will now see, at the end of Romans, in chapter 16, a remarkable link can be seen between the nations of the image in Daniel 2 and the believers at Rome. Romans 16 contains a long list of greetings which may not at first seem to be of great spiritual import. But several of the names have specific links to the empires symbolised by the metals in the image of Daniel 2. The name Obain means of the city. This compares with Babylon who, as it says in Isaiah 14 verse 21, desire to fill the face of the world with cities. The name Persis is the female equivalent of the name Persia. Olympus is reminiscent of Mount Olympus, the home of the Greek gods. Hermes was the name of the Greek messenger god. Aquila means eagle, and this was a symbol of Rome, used for example in the prophecy of Rome in Deuteronomy 28. Rufus means red, and in Revelation 12 verse 3, pagan Rome is symbolised by a red dragon. Asyncritus means incomparable. This is reminiscent of the iron and clay which are totally incomparable and do not cleave to each other. What is the significance of these names? The names are a reminder from where the believers come from. They are taken out of every nation of the world. It does not mean, of course, that the individuals referred to by these names necessarily had a link with the nation in which their name alludes to. Rather, the names are used by the Spirit in Romans 16 to typify that the redeemed are taken out of every nation. In Daniel 2, the image is ultimately destroyed and replaced with the kingdom of God. We shall come out of the nations and not conform to the world, so that when Christ returns, we might be found to be part of the one body of Christ. In this video we have considered some of the links between Daniel and Romans and there are others besides the ones we have looked at. Daniel and his three friends provided a sound example for the believers living at the heart of the Iron Empire.